As a member of the United States Army, Sergeant Craig will stand court-martial. I demand to be released in my custody as my prisoner. He murdered a civilian within the city limits at Dodge. The law says it's my duty to hold him. Well, then, Marshal, I'll take him by force. Quiet, Earth! Quiet, Earth! Brave, courageous, and bold! Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told! The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Wyatt Earp rode into Dodge City one bright May morning in 1876 and was chief marshal by noon. One month later, General Custer rode in proud defiance to his death on the Little Bighorn. That same year saw the close of a long and bloody campaign that drove the Plains Indian from the Dakotas, from his last hunting ground and his way of life. Battle-weary troops were moved east and south to regroup and recover. Among them were men whose memories were scarred by too much cruelty and killing. For these men, violence became their way of life. Private Crenshaw? Sergeant Craig, sir. Yeah. I wanted tobacco. Give me some tobacco. <laughs> Learn if I am fresh out myself. Aha. Uh -huh. General store and emporium. Follow me, Private Crenshaw, and we will go a foraging. I owe the merry a foraging we will go. Today we have a sale on the wagons. You perhaps know more about these than I do. Oh, I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. I'm Sergeant Craig, mister. Old engine fighter from way back. Only time you ever find Sergeant Craig waiting on an Indian is when he's got a rifle in his hand. Now, give me some chew in the back. All I have is Union Twist. So, what's the difference? It's chew in the back, ain't it? Hey, Private Crenshaw? If Union Twist is good enough for the Union, it's good enough for a couple of Union soldiers. Right, Sarge? Sure. Sure. Hey. Well, play the map, Private Crenshaw. Sergeant, I ain't a chawing man. Hey, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh. All present and pay for it, Sergeant Craig, sir. Yeah. Come on, Sergeant. Directly. Here's to me. He's a pretty good looking squaw. For a squaw. Pretty enough always to kiss, ain't she? Please, Sergeant, let's not have any trouble. No. Come on, come on, Serge. We got guard duty. Right. Hmm. Leave us alone, soldier. We don't make trouble. That's right, Ensign. You don't make no trouble at all. No. Come on, come on, Serge. Let it go. Help you help the doc take him over the coroner's office. You know, it's times like this, Marshal, that makes me think maybe I should have stayed in Cincinnati. Well, the important thing, Mr. Whittle, is will you make positive identification? I certainly will, sir. Good. Will you come down to the office and sign a statement? Well, I'll be glad to. It's high time something was done about that, Sergeant. He's done nothing ever since he's been here but give us one scare after another. I don't know why you haven't arrested him before this. He's a soldier, Mr. Whittle. He and his company have spent better than six months in the Black Hills fighting the greatest alliance of Indians in frontier history. I know, I know. I should think he'd have his fill of fighting. Most of them have. Most of them are no trouble at all. Some are like Sergeant Craig. They... Well, something happens to them. They get crazy like. Oh, they've seen things that a man like you couldn't even dream of. It's kind of hard to explain. It seems to me that you're trying to make excuses for a murderer, Marshal. Not for a murderer, Mr. Whittle. But 
Maybe I'm trying to make excuses for a professional soldier. the death certificate. How's his squaw? I sent for his relatives. She'll stay with him till they fetch him. Now you're on duty tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Good. I want to ride out to the fort and pick up a sergeant. On what charges? Murder. What else? Flat. You think we have a case? You know the accused is a soldier. I never heard of a soldier being charged with killing an Indian. The an eyewitness, Mr. Whittle, it says it was a plain case of murder. Anyway, it's not up to me to try the accused, but it is up to me to bring him in. I don't know, Marshal. I hope that I'm doing the right thing. I'm sure you are, Lieutenant. Civil law takes precedence in a civil crime. You have no problem. <laughs> you don't know Captain Brooke. I'm afraid he'll hold a different view. Why should he? The law is the law, isn't it? But, Marshal, this is an Indian. Indians aren't citizens. And the law isn't too clear on this point. And a man like Captain Brooke, well, I'm... Look, Lieutenant, if you have any worries, forget it. I'll take full responsibility. Come in. You sent for me, sir? Sergeant Craig, this is Marshal Earp of Dodge City. He has a warrant for your arrest, claims you killed an Indian. Self-defense, Marshal. The Redskin pulled a knife. According to the owner of the store where it happened, the Indian was trying to get away when you shot him in the back. Well, I've got a witness myself. Private Crenshaw was with me, Lieutenant. He'll have a different story. You'll get a chance to tell it, Sergeant. You'll get a fair trial. I'm to go on trial for gunning an engine? What the U.S. government pays me to do? There's a different soldier. This Indian happened to be a Cherokee, third generation civilized. Uh, Cherokee, Comanche, Sioux, what's the difference? They're all the same. I don't intend to try your case, Sergeant. Just put you under arrest. I'll give the lieutenant your handgun and let's go. Give me the revolver, Craig. Are you going to let him get away with this, Lieutenant? I have no authority to prevent it. Now give me that revolver. All right, sir. When the captain comes back, you better have a different story. It'll be on the morning report. I wouldn't wait that long if I was you, sir. It's going to be bad enough you let a civilian run it over one of his boys. That'll be enough from you, Craig. Now get out of here. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Who's in charge here? I am, sir. You Wyatt Earp? Yes, Captain. I've come for Sergeant Craig. I'll ask you to be so kind as to release him into my custody. You Captain Brooke? That's right. Well, didn't Lieutenant Meade explain to you about him? Lieutenant Meade is fresh from the parade grounds of Washington, sir. He's got a great deal to learn about military practice on the frontier. Such as? Such as the Army's right to discipline its own men. Well, Captain, if the sergeant had uh, killed another soldier out in the territory someplace, you'd have claim to him, but he didn't. No, he killed a civilian right here in this town. That places him right in the hands of the local law. <laughs> Come, Mr. Earp, you can't be serious. Since when is it a crime to kill an Indian in self-defense? Well, I don't intend to debate the case with you, Captain. He's my prisoner by order of civil law. I'm going to keep him. Good day, sir. For a minute, I thought he was going to bust. I bet we haven't seen the last of him yet. Hmm. You've got a real safe bet there, mister. Time he gets back, he'll have a full head of steam, and then you'll really see him bust. Hey, I don't see Whittle's statement here. Hasn't he brought it in yet? No, not yet. When I stopped around this morning, he said he hadn't had time to get to it. He wants to get it right. Meade! Lieutenant Meade! 
Begging your pardon, sir, Lieutenant Meade is not here. He left this morning. Where's he gone? He didn't say, sir. There was another soldier with Sergeant Craig last evening when he had that altercation with the Indian. Who was he? I believe it was Private Crenshaw, sir. Tell him I want to see him. Yes, sir. You don't have to be afraid of me, Crenshaw. Long as my men are loyal to me, I'm loyal to them. You understand, Trooper? Yes, sir. You ever hear the phrase, esprit de corps? Y yes, sir. You know what it means? Well, I think so, sir. It's what this company has, Crenshaw. We've fought together, been beaten together, and we've won together. Well, that means something, doesn't it, son? Yes, sir. Have a drink. No, thanks, sir. Have a drink. Yes, sir. I think I will. <laughs> now then, Crenshaw. You say that this Indian pulled a knife and attacked the sergeant. No, sir, he didn't pull the knife. Don't hedge, soldier. It's my understanding that this Indian had a knife. That he did, sir. Well, then, am I correct in assuming that he was reaching for this knife when the sergeant, in order to protect himself, grappled with him? Well, I guess... I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that's the way it happens, so you see. I wasn't exactly watching at the time. Hmm. Now, then... How many people were in the store at the time? Besides the sergeant and me, I, I guess just the Indian and his squaw. And the proprietor, of course. Y yes, sir. Well, the squaw wouldn't count much in court. You wouldn't count much either, uh, being an army man and somewhat prejudiced. So that bullheaded marshal has only one man on which to rest his case, hasn't he? That storekeeper. Good afternoon, gentlemen. May I help you? You may, sir. You most definitely may. It concerns the altercation which took place here yesterday between one of my men and uh, an Indian. Yes. Other than Private Crenshaw here... I understand you are the only witness, uh, discounting the squaw, of course. That's quite true, Captain. As a matter of fact, I was just writing out a statement for the marshal. He asked me to set things down just as they happen. I'm afraid the marshal is leading you down the garden path, Mr. Whittle, when he asks you to take a stand against the brave fighting men of your country, uh, particularly when these fighting men are engaged in mortal combat with a savage enemy. With those self-same Indians, sir, whom you so obviously wish to give aid and comfort to, I dare say, sir, you have no concept of the enormity of this incident. Mr. Whittle, bring in the statement yet? No. Sergeant's on trial, Doctor, for 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yeah, I know. Harris is prosecuting. He's going to stop by here later this afternoon for depositions. Well, then Whittle better not wait to bring in that statement. You better come here in person. You better go tell him. Uh, I've been giving this quite a bit of thought since last evening, Marshal, and to be perfectly honest, I can't rightly say that it was entirely the sergeant's fault. Look, the last time I talked to you, Mr. Whittle, you were yelling for that sergeant's blood. Now, who changed your mind? Well, I was angry. Now, I've had a chance to think things over and cool off. I just can't honestly... Was Captain Brook in here to see you? All right, so he was here. Did he threaten you? Of course not. 
The captain happens to be a gentleman. I'm not asking for a character reference to Captain Brooke. I'm just asking for a little character from you. Now, I'm a tax-paying citizen, Marshal, and I'll ask you to watch your tone of voice. Forget it. When this case blows up in court tomorrow, mister, I just hope you turn out to be a better judge of character than I've been. No one passes. I'm Marshal Lurt. Sorry, sir. I don't care what your orders are, Deputy. I'm giving you just three seconds. Oh, good evening, Marshal. I've come for my prisoner. So you come to take him by force, Captain? If necessary, yes. Well, then I think you'd better first put the whole town under martial law. You don't happen to have a legal leg to stand on. Yeah, I know. I just saw Mr. Whittle. Then be sensible. Give me the prisoner. No. Look here, Earp. You couldn't even get the sergeant convicted on manslaughter without a witness, and you know it. My job is to take him to trial, and to trial he goes. Now, you get out of here. Hold it, Hal. Crenshaw, get in here. Keep these two covered. You, deputy, get in there and open that cell up. Let the prisoner out. Go ahead, Al. Give him all the rope he wants. Outside, Sergeant. Hurry. Just let me get my gun, Captain, sir. Hurry, Sergeant. Use my horse. You reckon my store? Sit up there. Shoot him down. Fire, I said. Shoot him, you coward. Shoot him. I've done my best to avoid bloodshed. But if that's what you want, let's have it now. I ordered you to fire. I order you to shoot this man. I'll make you wish you were never born. Thank <laughs> you. 
You keep that gun over here. Hey, Marshal, if you'll give me one more chance to reconsider, I'll be glad to testify against this ruffian. Thank you, Mr. Whittle. I'll remember you for this, mister. You sure will, Sergeant. You sure will. Come on, move up. happened to you, Captain? I... Take the prisoner inside. You can put up that gun, Mr. Earp. There'll be no more trouble. The Colonel's apologies and mine. The Captain hasn't been himself for some time now, so I took the liberty of sending for aid last week. The Colonel arrived as soon as he could. Mr. Earp? Colonel Grayson. Marshal? How do you do, sir? Stay with Captain Brooke, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. I don't ask you to understand, Mr. Earp, but I want you to know the Army will pay for all damages and make any necessary restitution. Thank you, sir. And what about the prisoner? The sergeant falls entirely under civil jurisdiction, of course. Lieutenant Meade explained everything to me. I only wish I could explain Captain Brooke's case to you as easily. All I can say is he's been in the Indian fights too long and he's not himself. He'll be sent east and his case reviewed. Well, as far as I'm concerned, sir, the incident never happened. Well, thank you, sir. Troop, turn him out. Mount! What a day. You think it was worth it? Hell, any time the sun sets on law and order, it's worth it. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. Long may his story be told. 